welcome to my class. Our lesson for today is all about drawing conclusions about population mean based on test statistic value and critical region. Our objectives are recall and apply steps in hypothesis testing. Draw conclusion about the population mean based on the test statistic value and the rejection region. Now, let's have the first activity entitled Fact or Bluff. Let us have the first statement. The notation mu and sigma are sample values. Is it a fact or bluff? Correct. It is a bluff. Let's have the next one. The alternative hypothesis is a statement there is no significant difference between the two given properties. Is it a fact or bluff? Correct. It is a bluff. Now, let's have the next statement. The given, the null hypothesis is equal to mu, which is 21.5. The alternative hypothesis, which is the mu, is greater than 21.5, show a one-tailed test, since it shows the direction of the distribution. Is it a fact or a bluff? Yes, that's correct. That is a fact, because the symbol shows a one-tailed test. Let's take another one. The rejection region for a hypothesis test is also called the critical region. Is it a fact or bluff? Correct! It is a fact. Let's have the last one. The two types of significant test are one-tailed and two-tailed test. Correct! That is a fact. Now let us recall again the table that we're going to use for our critical value. We have the C critical value table and the t-critical value table, or what we all know, t-table. Here are some pointers for us to know when to be accept or reject a given null hypothesis. If the computed value is greater than critical value, reject the null hypothesis. And if the computed value is less than critical value, we have to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Rejecting the null hypothesis doesn't mean that that is incorrect or the alternative hypothesis is correct. The collected data suggests a sufficient evidence to disprove the null hypothesis. Hence, we reject it. Similarly, a failure to reject the null hypothesis does not mean that it is true, only that the test did not prove to be false. There is an insufficient evidence to disprove the null hypothesis. Hence, we do not reject it. To deepen our knowledge on how and when are we going to reject a given computed value, let's have these given examples. Compute for its value given the following information. The alpha is 0 0.05, the null hypothesis which is mu is equal to 70, the alternative hypothesis which is mu is greater than 70, the x bar which is 71.5, sigma is 8, mu is 70, and the sample is 100. Since the sample is greater than 30, we're going to use z-test where z is equal to x bar minus mu divided by the quotient of sigma and the square root of n. Let us now substitute the given. We have 71.5 minus 70 divided by 8 lower the square root of 100. 71.5 minus 70 is 1.5 and the square root of 100 is 10. So we have 1.5 divided by the quotient of 8 over 10. Solving for 8 over 10, we have 0.8. Dividing 1.5 by 0.8, we have our C value, which is 1.875. Now, let's have our Z table. Our Z table will be used with the reference of its level of significance, which is 5%. And since our given alternative is greater than 70, it means that we are referring to one tailed. Therefore, our given critical value is positive 1.645, which is reflected to be right-tailed test. Using a standard normal curve, let us now locate the given critical value. And since our Z computed value is greater, greater than our critical value, 
we reject the null hypothesis. Let's take another one. Compute for its value given the following information. The alpha is 0 0.01, the null hypothesis which is mu is equal to 127, and the alternative hypothesis which is mu is less than 127. By the following given of x bar which is 124.5, mu is 127, s is equal to 5, and n is equal to 12. Since the sample is less than 30, the test statistic that we're going to use is t-test, where t is equal to x bar minus mu divided by s all over the square root of n. Substituting the given, we have 124.5 minus 127 divided by the quotient of 5 all over the square root of 12. 124.5 minus 127 is equal to negative 2.5. The square root of 12 is 3.46. Rewriting negative 2.5 and solving for the quotient of 5 and 3.46, we have negative 2.5 all over 1.44. Dividing negative 2.5 by 1.44, we have a given E value, which is negative 1.736. This case, we're going now to use the t-table. With the reference of our hypothesis, which results to one tailed, and obviously it is represented to be left tailed test, we're going to use the level of significance, which is 0 0.01. And since the degree of freedom is needed, we have n is 12 minus 1, which is 11. Getting now the critical value, we have 2.718. Since that is left tail test, the sign will be negative 2.718. Using the standard normal curve, let us now locate the given critical value. Let us shade. And since the given computed value is greater than our critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. Let us take the last one. The government claims that 10,000 pesos is the monthly expenses of Filipino family with four members. A sample of 26 families has mean monthly expenses of 10,900 pesos and a standard deviation of 1,250 pesos. Is there enough evidence to reject the government's claim at a given ALPA of 5%? Let us now enumerate the given. Let us determine the hypothesis. The null hypothesis shows that mu is equal to 10,000 and the alternative is not equal to 10,000. The given value for x bar is 10,900, the mu is 10,000, the standard deviation of the sample is 1,250, and the sample is 26. Since the given sample is 26, we are referring now for a given T test, which states that T is equals to X bar minus mu divided by S all over the square root of N. Substituting the given, we have 10,900 minus 10,000 divided by the quotient of 1,250 divided by the square root of 26. 10,900 minus 10,000 is 900. And 1,250 divided by two, square root of 26 is 245.10. Therefore, the quotient of 900 divided by 245.10 is 3.671. Using our given t-table, let us now locate the given level of significance, which is 5%. 5% or 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0 0.025. And our degree of freedom, which is 25, since the sample is 26. 26 minus 1 is 25. Locating our given critical value, we have 2.485, which is positive negative since that is a two-tailed test. Illustrating that in our given standard normal curve, we have 
our given critical value which is positive and negative 2.4815. Shading the given and summarizing the given computed value is greater than our critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. Let's take now the summary of our lesson for today. The first one is the computed value is greater than critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. And if the computed value is less than the critical value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We also utilize the two tables which is for the C critical value and T critical value. For your activity, you may open your module on page 11 of activity number 1 entitled Rejected or Not Rejected. The direction states, based on the given, decide whether the null hypothesis is rejected or not. For activity number 2, the entitled activity is find me states complete the table using the T table or the C table. And for activity 3, the title is am I rejected or not? Color the emoticon red if the null hypothesis is not rejected and blue if it's rejected. That's all for today class. Thank you for listening. Remember, aim high, senior high.